The following interview was conducted uh, with um, Billy Creasley, Wilnetta Creasley for the Chrysley. Chrysley for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, June the 8th, 2009 at a residence in um, Lafayette, Indiana. Also sitting in is Stephanie Schmidt from the Archives and Special Collections. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good afternoon. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents in early years. I was born in Newcastle, Indiana. Grew up most of my younger years and through high school in Rochester, Indiana, on Lake Manitou. Okay. Um, what was grade school like? Tell us about your early years in school. And do you have any siblings, brothers or sisters? I have no brothers or sisters. I am an only child. Okay. And it was lonesome. What did your parents do? My mother stayed home and took care of me. She never had a job that I know of. My father was a salesman of coal and different um, insurance for a while. Those um, in earlier years, he works and he was foreman in a foundry. He worked in the um, bridge company out of high school at Rochester, Indiana, and uh, worked in the bridge company. Uh, company um, they built small bridges around the Rochester area. And then he was in the Navy for a couple of years, and uh, and my mother stayed home with me. Okay, uh, what was high school like? Were there any student activities and that you oh, athletics? Yes. Every, everybody belonged to everything. How large was the high school? You recall, or your class large? My class was about thirty-five. Okay, was it close to where you were, were living? Yes, two blocks. Okay, okay, okay. What was athletics like? Is that where you got started with the cheerleading? Yes, in my junior and senior year, um, was cheerleader. There were four of us, two girls and two fellows. Okay, and what events was, would they have? Football and basketball? Uh, they only had basketball. Oh, okay, no football. No football. <laughs> Did they have an indoor uh, for the basketball? They play indoors? Yes. Okay. Any? Did you go to the away, away games? Were there any? Yes. Okay. Mostly small towns the size of Rochester. Okay. Okay. And then what comes next? Is that when, after you graduated, you came to Purdue? Yes, I did. Okay. How did you happen to select Purdue? They had um, a curriculum that I was very interested in. It was um, outside and inside interior decorating. And I went, um, I, it was half home ec and half engineering. And after the first year, they discontinued the program and I was furious. Did they say why they discontinued it? No, they just did. And I was told by my father to pick something that I really like to do and go back to school. So I did. And what I had to settle for was in the home ec group, which also was PE, um, so since they discontinued housing, I was in physical education, um, and I chose that because I like modern dance, and I wanted to be on the cheerleading squad. Okay. Did they have tryouts for you? Yes. The, okay. The first year, I did not make it. The second year I did. Good. How, how large was the group? 
Um, the group was different. It was 12 the first year and 10 the second year. Boys and girls? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And tell us what, your, what the outfits were. The outfits were wool sweaters and um, long pants. Slacks? Slacks for girls and fellas. Okay. And did you cheer at, uh, what, basketball and football? And she's also showing a picture of them. Very nice. She has a newspaper clipping and a book that she's holding, a scrapbook. Very nice. That's, I was not in the picture, but my name's in the article. Good. This was taken in Ohio State. Oh, you Columbus. went to it. Oh, the big house. Yeah. So you got to go to the away games? Yes. Some of them. Okay. Did they, they did they play in any postseason like they did today? Was there any? There were, probably was the Rose Bowl. I think went on at that time, but other bowls there weren't as weren't very many, as like they are today. I only remember going to three away games. Okay. But we didn't play as many games then yeah. as we as we do, do now. now. That's yeah. right. Yeah, smaller schedule. Oh yes. Yes, right. Um, you wanted to know what else I did. Yes. What were any other student clubs that you were in? And where did you live on campus? My first year, I lived in Woodhall. Okay. My second year, I lived in Cary East, which is men's. But Cary East was turned over to the women because there were only 3,500 students at that time. But I really enjoyed the athletics. Um, there were light effort operettas like Desert Song and New Moon, which was, they were held at um, the Music Hall. Elliott Hall on, of Music? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, on the stage. And you asked me one time about... Oh, yes. They were going to, the, the um, that, bleachers. That is the newspaper clipping mm -hmm. of it. Were you at that game? I was at that game. This is a bleacher incident that happened in 47. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Ooh. The, the day um, I was there. Were you there uh, cheerleading for the game? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, the floor was up, the basketball floor was up off the floor. And it was uh, at halftime. And I think everybody standing up on those bleachers made him start to sway. And they came down, and I, my parents were at the game. They had come down from Rochester to see the game. While we were there, uh, at halftime, I jumped up on the floor and went, ran over to the stairway to go up and see my parents. And when I got to the top of the stairs, the whole thing collapsed. And there were people hanging on the balcony that had been on the top of the bleachers. And my mom, mom and dad were standing there, leaning over, <laughs> going, you know, where is she? And I tapped my mother on the shoulder, and she turned around and grabbed me. <laughs> oh yes, they were not they were not uh, injured at all. No, they were up in the balcony. Okay, the permanent balcony. That's fortunate. But I can remember St. E. Hospital. That's the only one that we had at that time. Everybody was taken there that was injured. And all night long, John DeCamp was the 
commentator? Commentator on the radio all night long telling about each and every student with, that was at turn and how they were doing. That's very And we nice. stayed up all night and listened. Sure. I'm glad your parents were not injured, and you weren't injured. Had, no. If you had stayed where you were, would you have Everybody's been... legs were broken. Wow. It went... But if you had stayed where you were, would you have been injured? Or yes. Not? Well, you would have. My yeah. legs would have been broken, wow. like everybody else's, in that front row, because they were pushed up against the raised floor. Mm. Well, there was some of the musicals. Mm -hmm. Did they have um, B squared Victory Varieties? Did that go on at that time? Maybe not. Maybe that was later. Okay, okay. They used to be here for home football games. There's oh. minor dance. Did you take that at Purdue too? That's why I took PE so I could be in the minor dance. Okay. That's me right there. Oh, very good. What sort of performances did you do? Did you? Did Light you operettas, New Moon. Here, on campus? Yeah. At the music hall. Uh -huh. That's one of the... The first year we had a group, there were four of us. We called ourselves the Three Bees. To hell with everybody else. <laughs> there was Becky and Barb and Beverly and Billy, the four three Bs. <laughs> okay, you still there keep, we are. Do you still keep in touch? Still, are some of them still alive? With Barb, yes. Barb is married to Wendy Swartz, who started Pizza King. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is Barb and Bev and Becky and Billy. There they are. That's Wood Hall. For the uh, cheerleaders, did they have somebody that uh, trained you and worked with you? Did you have practice sessions? Oh, yeah. Okay. We practice a lot. Just like the band, they practice mm -hmm. too. Okay. Right. And of course, you were in Lambert Field House because Mackie wasn't built. True. What did they do with Lambert after the damage? Then they rebuilt. They rebuilt the inside. Is that what they did? I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, super. Music Mark and uh, the play shop. That's the precursor to what's known as the theater, Purdue Theater today. Hey, that's pretty nice. Very nice. I see a name there that's circled. I wonder who that is. <laughs> Must be the star of the show, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, um, do you know Bob DeMoss? Uh-huh, I've met him. Okay. Um, he was on the football team, okay? He was a quarterback. He was also my lab partner in I can't remember now. one of the courses that you had yeah mm -hmm. right. anyway we had to cut up a cat a cat that was they we some people went out to the dump and shot stray cats and we that was what we did and I made him do it. I wouldn't have any part of it. <laughs> I said I'm feeling friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I wouldn't have any part of that. Yeah. Uh, you, being a cheerleader, um, tell us a little bit about what the plans are for the reunion and, and whether... Um, we're getting... It's going to be for the, uh, for the tape. It'll be this fall. Yes. October the 5th, and then there. Anything, any other things that you'd like to share with us about campus life when you were here? What was Chauncey Village like? Did you get down there at all? or? I have no idea what you're talking Chauncey about. Chauncey Village, the little village where the shops, the shopping and things are? 
are you talking about where Chocolate Charlie's is? There you go, right. Yes, I've been there. Okay. It was there. Yeah. Yeah, I know it was. Yeah. Something that I did. And then you said you we were saying earlier you, you didn't you did not graduate. You you left? I dropped out. Okay. Like I said it was very foolish. Where you met your husband and the children and things. Okay. Um and some of the things that you mentioned here. I met John when he came back from the war. Okay. Where I'm was very, he where was he from? He was from Tell City, Indiana. Okay. And had he been here and then he left to go to the war? Um, he started in nineteen forty one. Okay. And he was a couple of there a couple of years. He joined the um, ROTC, and so he went in as uh, an officer, a lieutenant, and he went to, he became a navigator and flew uh, with B-24s. It was based in Italy, and he uh, flew over Germany and some of the European countries and I'm glad I didn't know him before the war because he was shot down twice and I would I didn't want to go through that I met him after he came did back. he get captured or not no oh okay no he did not uh, he was um, he was t taken by some Russian soldiers and he said that they had an awful lot of um, sweets uh, those countries over there um, <laughs> they thought they were doing something nice he said really they would have given the right arm for a hamburger <laughs> <laughs> instead of sweet rolls and <laughs> things like that but um, after he came back, uh, like I said earlier, Barb and Wendy um, were a couple at that time, Wendy Swartz and Barb Phelps, and then eventually got married. But um, Wendy was a Della Upsilon, and so was John. They were fraternity brothers. I never organized with a sorority because I was so busy cheerleading practice and with the light operettas and modern dance. I just didn't feel like I had time sure. for that. Even though my other three best friends, that's what they did. They were all um, Della Gamma. And, um, well, Barb and Wendy got at me a date when I went back for my third year, and we went on a hayride. I didn't get along too well with my date, which it was from the DU house, like Wendy, and he took me, when we went back to the house, we went down to the dining room and kitchen area. They had um, records down there and they were dancing down there. He, my date left me, uh, said he'd be back after a while. He went upstairs. Well, some guy came out of the kitchen door, swinging doors, and he grabbed me and we started dancing and re we really hit it off. And we've been dancing ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, that's wonderful. <laughs> it was um, a really good thing. Uh, like I said, I dropped out my final year because there just wasn't enough money. I went to, went to work for the secretary 
of the dean of the graduate school. I think his name was George Hawkins. Her name was Marjorie something, I don't remember what, but um, I worked for her in my final year and John finished school. What was he majoring in? He was a mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. Then after um, we got married, we lived on South Chauncey in West Lafayette. And uh, after John graduated, we went to Evansville, Indiana. We worked for the Seagram, Seeger, I don't know. Um, they made cold spot refrigerators for Sears. And we both worked for, he as an engineer and me as a um, secretary. Then we went back to Rochester, my hometown, where my parents lived. And um, we bought into a coal business, which is John was the manager of, and my father was selling coal at the time. So he furnished the coal. And we were there for about seven years and our son John was born in 1949. And from then on, John went back into engineering jobs. Um, in 1955, my daughter Gina was born in Rochester. And in 1956, my daughter Jennifer was born in Kokomo, Indiana. You had you moved to Kokomo? Yes. Oh, okay. And John was working for Chrysler in Kokomo. Okay, okay. Then we had different engineering jobs um, in Muskegon, Michigan. Um, Normal, Illinois, mm -hmm. and South Bend, Indiana. And then by that time the kids were grown, Gina went to Washington University in St. Louis and got an MD, PhD. Jenny went to Purdue and received a B.S. degree in interior design. And both my girls live in Lafayette, Indiana, where I am now. And my son, who got it, finished up his engineering degree in Wisconsin, lives in Appleton, Wisconsin. Does he work for an engineering firm? Yes. Okay. He's head of sales. Okay. Well, good. Very good. Okay. Jennifer works for Deno in Lafayette. Okay. She is their engineer design. Mm -hmm. And Gina works, has been with the faculty at Purdue for the past 20 years. Very nice. So your, your roots are here. Um, your roots are here. We, when John and I decided to retire, um, he, we decided to check out Rochester, my hometown. There was nobody left that we knew there. And my girls said, please come back to Lafayette. We're not going anywhere, we're gonna stay here. So Gina has been busy teaching 
and Jennifer has been busy doing interior design and she has two very nice granddaughters daughters so we have seen our granddaughters grow up very nice and been part of their lab life uh -huh. so we have Jennifer has two daughters and John and Sheila in Appleton, Wisconsin have four two daughters and two sons so we have six grandchildren Good. Is your husband still still alive? No. Oh. He died uh, five years ago. Oh, okay. We decided to come here. We moved here. To this to this apartment? To this apartment. And then in 2000, and then he died in November of 2003. Okay. He wasn't ill very long. Mm. Okay. So, okay. good. I play a lot of bridge. It's my salvation. <laughs> yeah, how do you do well? I'm sure. <laughs> it's been a long time since I played bridge. <laughs> Let me ask you one thing. Do you have any uh, a favorite uh, Purdue tradition? I often ask people that. Is there a tradition of Purdue that comes to mind for you? I watch every ball game. All sports or just all uh, every basketball and every football. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> What about um, an outstanding event? Do you have an outstanding event that you'd like to share with us? Comes to mind? All the ball games I went to. Right. And share that. And share that. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Is there one game that you went to that was kind of interesting that uh, sticks to you remember? It was, must have been pretty hard when the weather was cold. <laughs> well, we were out there jumping around. <laughs> We, we you kept warm. I kept warm. <laughs> you know, one thing I remember is one year we were playing at Indiana, and they had a swamp, and I mean a swamp, a real swamp, for a football field, and the part the part of the field that we had to use as cheerleading. I had to put my boots on, and it was just like a quagmire. You couldn't jump. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't do stuck. anything. You took a step, and you went. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> if that's worth remembering. <laughs> yes, I think so. Right. Any? Um, go ahead. One of the games that we were at Columbus, at Ohio State, they. they Ohio State beat us that day, but the cheerleaders on the Ohio State team took us in convertibles to a place where we got drinks and did a lot of singing. We had some time to kill because we went over on the train. And they took us and put us on the train and we rode back with the team. Oh, how nice. That's very nice. Yeah. Any uh, closing comments or anything special you'd like to share? You no, I'm delighted to be here, and most of the people that I play cards with um, are my age, and for some reason or another, this seems to be a melding pot because it's the more you talk, the smaller the world gets. That's right. Exactly. And so many people uh, um, maybe I've played cards with for three or four or five years, I find, find out they're <laughs> from somewhere very close to me, right. like you. That's right. Very small. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you said you were from. I'm from Ohio originally. Oh, you know, from Ohio, yeah. but in the Midwest. You know. No, it was. Um, this lady that I talked to. Oh. They, oh. She told me she's from 20 miles from Rochester. So I'm looking forward to meeting her. Oh, good. 
we want to thank you very much for this interview. It's been very nice, and the researchers will benefit by it, and especially the big reunion coming up this, this fall. Thank you. <laughs> Her name is Jane Young. Okay. She was a cheerleader. In? She lives here in town. Oh, okay.